What up guys, today I'm gonna to show you the type of groceries that I buy when I'm on a bulk Asian edition. And anytime I go shopping for groceries for my fitness, I always go protein first and then carbs and fat. And that's the exact same way that I treat it, whether I'm bulking or I'm cutting. I wanna treat both of them as different sides of the same coin. I think a lot of people have trouble controlling their diet because they see bulking as splurging and then cutting as suffering. And they think it's one versus the other versus you wanna keep both of them with the same mindset. It should be like finances where no matter what, you always wanna save. Just sometimes you save a little bit more, sometimes you save a little bit less depending on your goals. So for me, since I'm bulking, my proteins, it's gonna be a little bit fattier. When I'm cutting, it's gonna be a little bit leaner. And also I get to put in a lot more yummy stuff because uh, I'm not going for this, I'm going for this. And the groceries that I'm buying is what I bought during my bulk. I just finished my bulk, but this is how I'm able to increase strength, increase muscle mass during the bulk without adding too much fat. Some of my favorite proteins that I like to eat when I'm on a bulk is pork belly. There's a lot of fat in it, so it's extremely flavorful. And it comes in two different variations. This nice and thick cut one is really, really good on the grill. Like it crisps up, it has like this nice, like juicy texture. And so I love this. But um, you guys know me and my stews. Sometimes it's just really convenient just to throw everything in one big old pot. And that's when the thin slice comes out really good. The other guilty pleasure that I like, it's not even that guilty, is uh, Korean kalbi. So this one's pretty fatty, and that's why it's so juicy, but it's also marinated. So anytime you have something that's marinated, you gotta watch out for the marinade ingredients. Like when you're just taking just pure protein, it's generally not gonna be high carbs, right? But in a sweet marinade like this, there's like a lot of sugar, there's pear, there's all kinds of things that brings up uh, the sugar end of it. Not to mention that short ribs are a little bit fattier, which is also why it's so flavorful. And as I'm talking, I'm salivating. And these are my go-to proteins. Regardless of my bulking or cutting, one thing that is my go-to is kimchi, because it's veggies, it's hard for people to eat veggies because it's not flavorful, but this thing has a ton of flavor and also has probiotics, which helps with your digestion. And there's so many different uses for this. You can leave it on the side, almost as if it's like a coleslaw where it's refreshing and cold, or you can throw it in stews, fried rice, marinate meats with it, kimchi. And also what I have in front of me is Asian Coke. So this goes really good with your food over ice you drink. No, I'm just kidding. No, this is soy sauce. Um, you can't leave the market if you like Asian food to season it without some soy sauce, some sesame oil, and then also some sir sriracha. These are like some of your go-to seasonings. Anytime anything's lacking a little bit of flavor, and it tastes bomb. Sesame oil, you gotta be careful because a little bit goes a long way, especially if you're cutting, but since I'm bulking, I could pour this on. The other two are relatively fat-free, so you can throw that on as much as you want. You can make a salad dressing out of it if you want to, or a vinaigrette. Uh, with sesame oil though, let's see, 14 grams of fat per tablespoon. So that's quite a bit, so be careful. Ha-ha! Dumplings are honestly one of my favorite foods, regardless if I'm bulking or cutting, because it's so easy to make. You just boil it or steam it for three to five minutes and bam, you got a hot meal that has literally everything. It's high in protein, moderate in carbs, uh, depending on the meat, could be high in fat, low in fat, but it also has veggies inside. So when I'm bulking, then I go for the juicier meats, of course, like beef or pork. And if I'm cutting, then I go for the chicken. And you always just look at the back. Like for this one, this one has a two to one protein to fat ratio. So this is awesome. So even if you're bulking and you have this one and you're like, oh, you know what? This gave me extra room for fat later. And that always means ice cream. <laughs> When you're busy, you can never go wrong with curry, baby. Because what's so dope about curry, you can make a ton at a time. You get a big old pot, you take these tablets, throw in there, fill it up with water, 
control the amount of protein and veggies you want to have in there. So when it comes to meal prepping, the thing that wastes the most time is you're cooking all the ingredients separately. Like you got veggies over here, then you got meat over here, then you got rice over here or carbs over here. With curry, you throw all of that stuff in the same pot. You got potatoes, carrots, onions, meat, all in the middle and it tastes even better throughout the week. So like you make it on a Monday, Tuesday the marinade goes inside, Wednesday it tastes even better. Oh my God, by the time Thursday the potatoes like crumbling and it gets all thick, kind of tastes like a roux. Woo! This right here, player player, you cannot make stews without a little bit of this. This is a, a fish base, hondashi, and you put it in a little bit of everything and it just brings up the flavor like, oh! You know how like a, like American supermarket, like the shebang bang is the lorry seasoning, right? Like anytime you wanna just bump it up, you're like, ain't nobody looking, right? You throw that in there and people like, oh, what's that? That's this with this, especially with stews, anything, you just throw it in there and you can literally smell it. As soon as it hits the, the boiling hot water, you're like, Mm-hmm, that's home dashi right there, Blair. When you're on a bulk, man, you cannot forget about spam because this is one of the only proteins, I believe the protein, the fat to protein ratio might be two to one. There might be like 10 grams of fat for five grams of protein, let me see. All right, so it has seven grams of protein. Guess how many grams of fat there is? 16. So this is obviously something you cannot eat when you're cutting. And so I get my entire Spam fix, Spam Musubi, throwing it in stews, uh, Spam and eggs over rice, oh my goodness, when I'm on a bulk, Spam. And you got all kinds, you got the Korean luncheon meat style, you know, like you could barbecue it, oh my, oh, oh dude, oh. Quick tip, I know a lot of you guys have a hard time getting carbs in, Bam, you got an entire world, Chinese, Thai, Korean, Vietnamese, Japanese, entire row of different carbs, really easy to make, two to three minutes of boiling water, bada beam, bada boom. Now, if you got a little bit more time, my favorite carb in the world is noodles. Don't matter if it's like Italian and pasta, or if it's udon, Udon is like one of my favorite carbs in the entire universe. So if you got the time to cook, bam. And they got all these like, look at that, high quality noodles. So you throw this in, let, let's see, per serving, 123 grams of carbs. So those of you guys that are like, man, I can't get my carbs in no matter what. Bada bing, bada boom, look at this. This one is Udon and it's 51 grams of carbs in this bag, and I could easily eat two of these. So that's 100 grams of carbs in one meal. So I'm just giving you guys tips, whether it's like the ramen or the udon or rice. I know a lot of you guys get stuck, like there's a lot of obstacles, right? Like either time is an issue where you don't have time to cook, or you get bored of your food and you're like, oh, I need more variation. You actually have a ton of variation if you just go and know how to look in the right places, from udon to rice to the instant noodles, to these type of noodles, to rice noodles from Vietnamese, like if you get pho, oh my, dude, this, did you know, you could cook it and then you can eat it cold and you can make a noodle salad out of it. So there's just a lot of variations out there. Just wanna give you guys all the tips so that you can plan out your meals for the week and go, mmm, and actually look forward to it. All right, so now we're in the carb section, and for most people's diet, the mainstay is rice. It's easy to make, and it's also very affordable. Like this bag right here will literally last me forever. I don't even know how long, and it comes out to like 10 cents a serving. If you want something a little bit faster sometimes, you get this one. It is a little bit more expensive, but it's also more convenient, so you can get a little bit of both and see what fits your schedule the best. So one of the funnest parts of bulking is being able to eat some fun foods, especially if you need it to hit your fats or carbs. Choco pies right here, you got seven grams of fat and also 25 grams of carbs with two grams of protein. So nutrition wise, it's worthless, but it's a lot of fun and makes you happy. And then these gummies right here, oh, just delicious, delicious carbs. Some people have a really hard time hitting their carbs or their calories, especially like the hard gainers out there, which I know there's a lot of, right? Like some of my friends, when they're trying to bulk, they gotta take in 600, 700, 
800 grams of carbs. So a good mindset to have is if you have more carb allowance, these things are really fun things to have, but they're also tools to help you hit your macros. So what I wanna remove away from is that toxic mindset of like, okay, only this food is good, this food is bad. Everything in overabundance is bad, right? So it's all about moderation and keeping track of not only hitting your calories, hitting your macronutrients, but also what makes you feel good and fuels you for your workouts at the end of the day. What up guys, we're in the vegetable section. These two are some of my favorite vegetables because as you guys know, I love to make stews. Cabbage, you can chop it up, it's super cheap. It's the same vegetable that goes into kimchi. Spinach, you chop it up with some garlic, salt and pepper, and bada bing, bada boom, tastes really good. In the vegetable section, it's where you can get creative. And you always wanna get some serving of vegetables in per meal because it helps with digestion and just overall health. Also, another meat that I really like that's really hard to find at non-Asian supermarkets is short rib. You see all this white? That's all that fat right there, has that good marbling, makes the meat really, really juicy. Like this cut isn't that common in American cuisine. So if you want a juicy short rib, you gotta go to the Asian markets. And also all these proteins that you see here from chicken to fish to beef to lamb to pork, it all depends on your fat allowance. Some people when they're bulking, they can have a lot of fats in their macros. So when you have that, go ahead and exercise that right and add a ton of fat into your diet so it's really juicy and delicious. One of the cool things about Asian butchers is they have a lot of pre-marinated meat soup, like the kalbi I showed you, the bulgogi, and so if you have a ton of room in your macros, you can come here and you don't even have to worry about the flavor when you go home, you know the flavor is gonna be right in there. You take it out of the packaging, throw it on a pan, throw it on a grill, and you're ready to rock and roll. No matter what your diet is, one of the most important things is staying hydrated, right? Drinking lots of water, but I know a lot of people don't like water or they're like, oh, water is tasteless. How do I drink that much water? An easy way is making teas. With barley tea, what's super cool about it, it's caffeine free. It's also zero grams of carbs, zero grams of fat, zero everything. It's literally zero calories. It's super easy to make. And then now you have a flavorful tea. Like you've ever been to a Korean restaurant and it comes out with that brown water, it's barley tea. You can drink that. Don't worry about it ruining or sleep or anything like that. Super easy. I love this. The other thing is ginseng. This is Asian Viagra. So if you have a problem of like getting the pow, pow you know, doing the, the uppercuts. No, I'm just kidding. My mom drinks this, I don't know why. She doesn't even have a, you know what I'm talking about. Also one of my favorite things about Asian supermarkets are the food that's ready to go. Like this, kimbap right here. So it's pretty much rice. You got a little bit of meat in there. You got veggies. This thing is super flavorful. You take it to go and if you're busy, pack this in your lunch and it's a really good high carb snack with some veggies in it already, bam. This is also a staple that I always have in my house, miso paste. Because I love stews so much, this is one of the main bases that you throw this in there and you throw pretty much, this is almost the way like where you can like not go wrong. Like you literally put like a few tablespoons in a big pot, throw all your veggies, all your protein, carbs, whatever, and you just let it boil and you salt to taste. And you can literally not go wrong. There's even times where I have a bunch of leftovers and I'm like, dude, what do I do? I don't even know how to combine them all. Fuck it, throw it all in a pot, throw some miso paste in there, to add that home dashi I just told you about, and a little bit of the fish sauce, beep, 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 boom. Dude, you'll surprise yourself where you're like, what is this garbage? It tastes so good. Lastly, the dessert section. For desserts, I prefer ice cream. I freaking love, love, love ice cream. And something that's really ironic is, as a kid, I hated red bean. It's one of those things I think, like as a kid, like you're like, ugh, what's this? But then as you get older, it becomes really nostalgic. So one of my favorite desserts is this fish with red bean. And you'll find red bean in all kinds of like Asian desserts, like mochi, shaved ice. Grab one of these guys. Let's see what the macros are on these. 2.6 grams of protein. 5.6 grams of fat. Oh, carbohydrates, 38.6 grams. So it's actually pretty low in macronutrients, only 215 calories. So you could probably actually eat two of these if you're on a bulk, and if you're on a cut, you might be able to sneak one of these bad boys in and go to sleep with a smile. As you guys know, 
My favorite part of fitness actually isn't even training. It's the eating part of it, right? Because you have to eat to hit your goals, whether you're bulking or you're cutting. So hopefully you can use all these different ingredients and foods that we shared in this video to help you achieve your goals. And this is just one way to do it, right? There's like so many different cultures because through food you can access different cultures. Like for example, my wife is Mexican and there's a lot of food that I also borrow from the Mexican cuisine to cut and also bulk. And when we go to family gatherings, we're eating that stuff all the time and I can still stay on track. So let me know if there's any other culture you'd like me to explore. We'll go check out those markets to help both of us reach our goals. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.